another installment of Curriculum Spotlight. This week is going to be First Language Lessons by Jesse Wise, who is the co-author for the Well-Trained Mind book, Curriculum Guide, and then also the Well-Educated Mind for Adults. Um, they publish that through Peace Hill Press, and they also have a wonderful education, um, homeschool forums, the Well-Trained Mind forums. These books are available for grades one through four. Um, they, the cheapest I've found to purchase them is on Rainbow Resource for about $10 each for levels one and two. Levels three and four have both a student guide and a teacher's guide, so their prices were higher. I want to say that each book was about $20. I forgot to write it down. <laughs> Sorry. Um, on Peace Hill Press's website, you can buy the books. Levels one and two run, retail about $15. They also have a PDF download version that was $12. And then levels three and four you can purchase on there again. Um, Amazon also has them, including a Kindle version. So there's several version ways to purchase, depending on how you want to, what your preferences are. There's also a CD available. Um, for them and they run about $11 and $9 on Peace Hill Press's website if you want an mp3 download. Pros. I will straight up say that I'm a huge fan of these. I love them. Um, one of the things I love is that there's a really good variety of grammar, memory work, narration, and copy work. Um, it's a very gentle approach. Kids look forward to doing this because it's almost always on the couch, cuddled up with a blanket or with me or whatever. So it's great for that. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm not sure what my kids are watching upstairs. They went to go turn on a movie and I'm hearing the floor is kind of shaky. Uh, <laughs> so I apologize if you can hear that. It's a very each lesson is very quick and easy to go through. It's rare that we spend more than 10 minutes on a lesson. And because it's so short, there are days when we end up doing more than one lesson at a time. Levels one and two are non-consumable. And then levels three and four, like I said, have a teacher guide, which is non-consumable. So it's nice to be able that you can purchase once and use it with multiple children. Cons of it. One con is that there's not really a lot of practice. My Growing With Grammar, see that one has a lot more written practice. This does not. It's um, almost all of it in levels one and two are oral. I have not used levels three and four, so I, I know that there is a lot more writing in that one. So this is great if you don't want a workbook approach. If you want a you know a non-traditional approach to grammar, this is probably the best choice that I've seen. If you like things highly scripted, this is completely scripted. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like being you know, I don't like things telling me what to say. So, you know, I improvise. Some things I'll read exactly, but other times I improvise and choose what I want to say. You know, can tell me what to do. <laughs> if you want a very school at home approach, if you want this to be a subject that is done independently, this is not a good choice for you. It is very easy to implement. There is not a lot of preparation needed most lessons. Um, some lessons will have enrichment activities or you'll need something for that activity, but even what you need is usually just like paper or my lesson for tomorrow, we're working on linking verbs and state of being verbs. Um, and so tomorrow I have to cut up construction paper into links so we can make a chain. So there is some preparation involved, but not, not very much at all. 
and like I said, most weeks there's no, um, there's nothing I need to do. Okay, but I will say that the operation that is involved sometimes is at all, but for whatever reason, it causes me to, sometimes I struggle with it. <laughs> and so this will get pushed to the side and, you know, skipped over if we need to move along by myself. So that I know that if I've skipped it more than twice when it's on the assignment list, I just skip that lesson and move on because I know that if I don't, then I'm gonna keep pushing it aside. You know, my son's only seven, so he'll have a chance to catch it again. As I said, it's easy to implement and it's almost always open go. Since I did say that I only use levels one and two, and I mentioned growing with grammar, you may wonder why I haven't used it longer. For my daughter, this was not such a great fit. I think partly because there was no, there was so little writing. I'm not sure what, why it wasn't a wonderful fit for her. She did well with it, but it didn't seem like there was a lot of retention to it. And that may be because there's not a lot of review, which was another con against it. Um, the memorization work is reviewed, but not really the other parts of speech, except as it's built in as you go on. And then at the same time as she was finishing up level two, I really needed something that was a little more independent work for her life circumstances at the time, I needed something she could do on her own. So that's why we switched to Growing With Grandma for her. Each book has a hundred lessons. So like Growing With Grandma, it, this is not a daily work. Um, it would be, you know, half of your gila with the other half, about two to three lessons a week. Allergies are bothering me. I don't know if you can read that, but it says the well caffeinated mind. I got that from their website last year when I ordered the story of the world. The right, here's the first lesson. This is level one. Um, the scripts for the instructor are clearly labeled. If they have any notes that you need to know, they'll put it down there, and then there's always something bold where they'll put like a definition, something. Um, the student section is what you, they want you to prompt the student to answer. One of the things they, one of the goals through this book and their philosophy is modeling how well to speak. So you know, if they ask, if you ask a question and they, your student just answers with a one or two word answer, they prompt you to, um, model using a complete sentence for your student to repeat. So, um, there are several poems throughout each level that they'll introduce. So, um, they'll give you information about the poem and how to teach it. We usually, we will read it two or three times and then We'll say it with a new one. With a new poem, I will say it two or three times and then have the students join me once or twice to repeat as much as they can. And the poems are really good, a good length. They build as you go through level one and then level two, they get more difficult very in a very gradual way. The daughter can still repeat the poems that are in here and last year I used this with my um, boys who were then six and four. So after they introduce a new poem, most less, most of the following lessons they will have you do a poem review to go back and say it once or twice again as more practice. So, so in lesson three again they have everything scripted for you. Mm -hmm. um, then interspersed with the grammar, um, like here's one of the enrichment activities. So here's one of the enrichment activities and this was on proper nouns. So the enrichment activities 
that if your student's writing easily, to go ahead and have them um, write a few of your, the family names. When we did this, my six-year-old was not writing easily, but I had him go ahead and practice his name and his siblings' names, and we did an extra paper. Um, so in addition to the grammar, there's also different types of narration that they use. One is a story narration. So they give you all the information you need to know about teaching story narration. And then you'll read the story. And that's about the length of it in this level is you know, just about a page or so. And then there are questions about the story. And again, um, they give you complete sentences to prompt your student with. Another one I wanted to show is the art. There are several lessons where they show real artwork. And I'll just have the, my student look at it, spend a couple minutes noticing, and we'll talk about it and see what details stand out and whatever knowledge they can bring into it. In your script, they have information for you to read to your student um, about the piece of art and about the artist. And then, again, they'll have the questions and answers. As you get further into the book, the, the amount of copy work increases. If your student at this point is still not writing easily, then you, know, you can easily adapt it. You know, just have one sentence or none at all. You know, in this one, uh, my mo mother's brother is uncle. You could have him just fill in the blank. Uh, it's very easy to adapt. It's one of the things I like about the whole um, book is that you, you really can adapt it to the, meet the needs of your student easily. Level one, another one of the artworks. Um, there are cumulative re um, poem reviews. So at this point at lesson 57, students have already memorized five poems. And level one includes days of the week and the month. Some of the poetry is, you know, things that they can actually use. And then they have that again towards the end. But like I said, I still, I wish there was more review of the parts of speech throughout it. You know, they have the cumulative poem review, but I wish they had somehow more, re you know, a cumulative review of everything else at that point. Or, so again, you know, you're starting to see more copy work on more and more of the lessons at the end. Okay. Um, lesson 99 is a cumulative review of all the poems and there were six in book one. Okay. And then lesson 100 introduces you to a poem that is the first poem in book two. Okay. And then here is a final grammar review that's um, all oral. So it it was a nice way to end, end the year. And I was actually surprised at how much my kids remembered from it. And here's book two. As you can see, the covers have held up pretty well. This one has been used a couple years. And one of my children. <laughs> This got caught in their cutting. Um, so, you know, there's wear along it, but not, not bad. Um, it is laminated, um, but I, it could use a little nicer lamination, but the spine has been fine. All the pages have stayed sewn in, so they're glued in. Level two has held up a little better, but we're only a couple months into the school year. And this is the second time I've used it. So, um, there's not any strong differences in this one, so I won't go through as much of it. Um, again, you know, here's the new poem. It's the one that was introduced at the end of the other level. Notes to the instructors, your scripts. Okay. Um, there is, oh, one thing I like at the beginning, I'm not sure. This will show up. Um, that they tell you 
they go ahead and give you what is going to be covered, what the copy work is going to be, and then the poem review. And I find that helpful to know, you know when I first look at the page if we're going to have copy work or not. On it. More of the lessons do have copy work. I think they all or nearly all of them have some level of copy work in it. Whether we do the copy work or not varies by the lesson. My son also has handwriting and we're working through Explode the Code which has writing in it as well as our writing program, writing strands. And then he also has some for spelling and um, Bible. So we don't always do the copy work in here because he's done so much other writing. Again, here's um, another of the story narrations. Um, it's longer, a little longer in this book, but the amount of questions are still about the same. And they have the artwork. My kids love, have loved the artwork so much that I kind of wish they had incorporated more of it through there, but it's been very good for us to learn the technique in here because we've been able to easily emulate it other artwork that we see. I, I appreciate what that has brought to our schooling. Moving ahead to the end, we've got a review of the memory work poems, which were there are five of those. And these are poems that are read through the book, throughout the book, but are not memory works. So if you wanna go back and read them again with your student, one, you know, in addition to appreciating the work of learning how to memorize, I also really like that these choices are very kid appropriate. They're not, they're quality poems, but quality poems that are interesting to kids. Also, oh, also included in this book, they start learning how to um, do dictation exercises. So there's review of that at the end. There's two pages of that. Nope, three pages. And this is um, a skill that I didn't know would be so challenging to do. We also have used writing with skill, so they get more of a practice of it there. I didn't know it would be a challenging thing, but it is, or it has been with my daughter. I'm not, I haven't done dictation yet with my son, but it's good, I appreciate introducing that. And then they have another story narration at the end and then one more time to review the different parts of speech. 